Alright, citizens of the world, this is Defenders issue 53, and this is now two videos in a row with Jorge Parade covers. Russia Girl taking the centre stage on it here. And I believe this is the only cover where that is the case. Russia Girl was a member of the Defenders, who then got sent off to Russia. She did what many racists would applaud, which is she went back to where she came from. It doesn't work out for us, sadly. This is part two of this story, or part one, as it is called in the issue itself. The way they list the parts of this is bananas. Basically, the issue before part one, and then the issue after part three, are also essential parts of the story. Anyway, one thing you will notice if you look close is the shambles we have ganning on with the art. The dreaded deadline doom has come for the defenders. And we have Kevin Griffin requiring help from David Cockburn and Gold member. We will see another effect that this has on the book, and Kevin Griffin will last one more issue after this. But despite the many hands on deck, oh god, there is a pun there because they are in a submarine. Despite all the people involved, it still feels consistent with the issues that came before. That was solely Kevin Griffin. You have big splash pages like this. Similar to how we had one's last issue. The story is that Russian nuclear science tests. Led by a bad guy called Present. Who has also kidnapped Russia Girl. They are doing zany science experiments with nuclear radiation. And it has started to spread to Sea World. And it is causing problems for all the seamen. So Seaman has got the defenders involved in this. And they are going to try and stop Russia. And now we're here, we have our bad guys. We have Present and his brainwashed love slave, Russia Girl. They are being transformed into nuclear-powered gods here. I think Present is... A solid bad guy. But it's sad to see a character like Russia Girl. A character who was introduced as being politically unique in the Marvel Universe. Have such a odd reset like this. And lose all of that identity. She becomes literally a fuck stump for... A bad guy. Nearly her entire personality is erased. And now she is devoted to Present. And if you think Present looks like Benicio Del Toro or any of the other pensioners of the universe, don't worry about that. This is not his final form. Subplot page with Velcro and also Rachel McAdams. They are back in New York and we have some more of the Velcro College stuff. 
I like this subway scene here. This is like a classic Kevin Griffin bit. And the Velcro, a college plot. It has potential, but it ends up being marred by this prick. This is Lobo. Kevin Griffin leaves the book and so this character doesn't become what was intended and instead becomes a convoluted mess. Kevin Griffin instead gans to DC and reintroduces the character there and he becomes very well known. Kevin Griffin returns to Marvel in the 90s and then Ray reintroduces the character at Marvel and he is a lot more like the DC version. I have described it much better than I did in the other video with him in. Cool layout on this page here. And in general, this is Kevin Griffin's last story on the series. And any of these bits may have been David Cockburn or Gold member. But it does feel like some innovative artistic stuff is ganning on here. And I really like this story with Present. Even I've not read the final parts. This is him fully outfitted. He goes on to have more appearances in this series after this storyline. He is also in a Bill Bungalow Oak one. He is in Kazar and he is in Kazar a lot. I didn't realise until I thought about it. He's in like four different Kazar story arcs. He's in Kurt Busey's Avengers run and a few other things. Anyway, this is the end of this issue, it seems. And you would be right to think in your mind space that it seems very, very short. Because we actually have got a backup story. Presumably because getting the art finished for the main story had suddenly become an asshole. This stars Rachel McAdams and it is okay for what it is. Nothing extraordinary but it's fine with me to give her a little spotlight since she is usually forgotten about in the pages of Defenders. I am curious if I will rename her when an actress does actually play her in a movie. I quite like the art in it. Rachel McAdams looks nice. And that is something I didn't think of Rachel McAdams, the actress. One could argue that this is Proto Marvel Comics Presents Dirge. But at least it feels relevant here. It is nothing special. There is no consequence. Maybe I'm getting soft on it because the backup story we get next issue is a lot more connected to stuff. And it resolves a little bit of continuity. But this is alright. It's big problem is that the main story is only 12 pages. And didn't progress that much. Call me bizarre. But I would be more content if this was discreetly mixed in. With the main story to feel like a subplot. I still recommend this issue and this storyline. It's fun Defender stuff. Warts and all. There is a lot of stuff I could describe as 
a shame, but it's still worth a read. It's classic late Bronze Age fawn, seven thumbs up. 